So, um, yeah, we were, you may have seen me walking around and you may wondered why does this middle-aged woman has no shoes on? Was there any thought in your mind about that? So what were you thinking when you see somebody like me walking around? I, I'm not drunk, I can promise you that. I'm not homeless, I do have a very beautiful loft. A hippie, yeah. Do, do I look like a hippie? Well, maybe a little bit flower power. Somebody wants to feel the earth. Somebody wants to feel the earth. Well, there's not much here, but in general, that's pretty good. What else were you thinking? Come on, you can be free. Maybe she's weird. Brave. Well, I'm definitely weird. According to my daughter, I am weird. <laughs> It's good for my feet. Interesting enough, if I would ask you, do you think walking barefoot is healthy? Now, this is my question. Do you think walking barefoot is healthy? What would you say? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So this is not a question, no? Well, I've been walking barefoot since last July. We had a winter in between. I, was, I still kept all my toes. I like my feet. I wanted to keep my feet. I write for 25 years, I write books about the body-mind connection, and it is about listening to your body. So when it's cold, and it was cold this winter, I walk out the house, and my eyes are telling me it is cold. Yes? I tell you. <laughs> so my eyes tell me it's cold, but my eyes do not know anything about temperature. My eyes are very nicely placed in the middle of my head and have never even touched anything cold. So my feet, we, talked, we heard this before about the sensories that we have, that the brain doesn't have any sensories. The brain needs to get the input of our sensories. So when I walk out, and the first time in winter when I started, it's getting cold, that was my initial thought, this must be cold. I know this is cold. People wear shoes because precisely of the reason that this is cold. And so I put my first foot out, and I was surprised because my feet liked it. And then my eyes were looking, and my whole, my whole brain kind of collapsed by the thought of, why is this fun? <laughs> I was supposed, as a child, we all heard this, put your shoes on, it's cold, be careful, you might step on something. My mother, she's 87 years old, she was waiting for the first four months for my bladder infection, which I'm supposed to be getting by walking barefoot, which you actually don't because it's a, a virus infecting which you don't get by walking barefoot. So when I, I started in July, and so this is, you see, maybe I was in the underground station, and um, the only problem with walking barefoot is that you get attention. I like attention when I'm on stage, obviously, because otherwise nobody's listening to you, but I don't like attention in my normal life. So I'm, I'm hoping that you guys will walk barefoot with me once in a while so that it kind of gets spread out a little bit. Um, the reason that I started walking barefoot was a very simple reason. It was a noise level. Do you know when you walk yourself, do you know, how many of you know that they walk loud? Hands up, okay. How many of, them, of you think you walk quiet? Hands up, okay. What does your neighbor think? Do you walk quiet? the neighbors below you, there, there, there's different types of walks. And I didn't know any of this a year ago. So there are two types of walks. One is that you start walking with your heel, which is the regular walk, and we hear that when somebody comes in the panel down and we hear them walking. It's with your heel, this is why we have shoes, because they're covered, and then you st stamp like this. This is your normal walk. If you put your fingers in your ears, which is what I did when I first heard about it, I noticed inside of myself a huge noise. And you can try it out when you're outside later. And we, I, we have a workshop tomorrow too. You put your hands in your ears and it, is, it makes in your body, boom, 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 that's the noise. What happens is your shoes are covering on your heel everything to make it soft so you don't hear it. 
and your heel doesn't feel it, but your knee has to absorb the shock, your hips have to absorb, absorb the shock, your whole spine has to. And that's the reason we hear increasingly people complaining about runners, about their knee problem, their hip problems, and it has to also to do with the way we walk. Now, there's another way to walk, which is that we walk when we run. You know, when we all run barefoot, we run on our front, because you, you can't run like this. It hurts after a while and it looks stupid too. So you, you start running on the balls of your feet. This is the natural way of us to move, which is this here is all designed, the whole foot is designed to move. The heel isn't. The heel goes right to the knee. There is no cushion that does anything with that. So when you do this, you notice unfortunately too late, that you hurt the rest of your body by that. We have lost the way to connect to our feet. Who likes their feet? Who of you love their feet? Okay. Wah. I heard a loud wah. Okay. This was not very many people. Who says, well, you know, it's okay, I have them, but if I don't see them, it is better? Hands up. Okay. Who just tries to hide them as much as they can? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the, 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 the problem is with our, with our feet. If you look at a tree, our feet are the root to the rest of our body. Our body is an instrument. We heard you guys play fantastically. They do sound so great because they're practice. If I would take the saxophone, and I had lessons years ago, but trust me, it wouldn't sound good. It wouldn't sound good. And that's the same with our body. This is the love of my life. This will be with me until I take my last breath. Nothing else will be there. Through my whole life, from my first time I got out, I took my first breath, to my last. Now, how do we treat this? Is this kind of an acquaintance that we say, oh God, I hope I don't see him very often, I really hate how he looks? Or do I say, I love this, this is my best friend, and without this, I wouldn't have a digital life. I actually wouldn't have a life at all. So when we have our digitalization, we talked about this, and I'm kind of the counterpoint to this. We also know that we have to, yes, I own a computer, and yes, I have an iPhone, and yes, I'm very much part of a digital world, but I also know that it needs balance. We were talking a lot about balance as well. And balance means to be balanced. Now, how do we do that? We can take our shoes off. It is an issue of fun, believe it or not. <laughs> it is not so much an issue of health. Because when I first started with the sound, and I told you about putting my fingers in, your, in my ears, and then I did the same with, with, with starting with my front, the balls of my feet, my walk, and when you put your fingers in your ear, you hear nothing. It is beautiful silence in your body. And that was, for me, the notice that my body didn't gain, get the speeding with every step. Now, some beatings are good, you know, when we exercise, we need to have some muscles to practice. It's not all about silence. But it is about to have a sense of being inside of the body. When I first started walking barefoot, two things surprised me the most. First, it was fun, something I wasn't really expecting. I did it for health reasons. I, did, I am healthy, but I was curious, what would that do if you, would, if you would be really, really barefoot in a modern world like that? And it's very funny because sometimes, you know, of course you meet people who ask you. I noticed that especially we Germans got very generous. Um, in other countries, in, I'm, I'm three months out of the year in California, I was never that comfortable walking in California, because in California, it's too much of a hygiene issue, um, which I like hygiene myself, but I feel I can wash this off. 
this is down there, and I know what's happening to my feet because they're on the floor. I do not know what happens to hands, <laughs> what people do with theirs. I know my feet are on the floor. So when you, the second part is about that it is fun, is how connected you all of a sudden are to the whole of your body. When I first started on the body-mind connection, my sense of me was all in here. Yes, when we made love and when we hurt ourselves, there were some other body parts involved, but mainly this was me, all here. And once I took my shoes off, I felt a whole connection to down to my feet. My feet are buzzing all the time. It's a really nice buzz. It's not the buzz you get from Three Whiskey Sour. It's a really comfortable buzz. And every moment you walk, you get a massage. I mean, there are floors that are nicer than others. I've been hiking. Skiing, to answer your question, is of course not possible because you can't. But you can walk in snow, and it's really lovely. I've been walking. Uh, below zero, you can do about 100 meters, you know, maybe 300 feet, maybe 500 feet, it depends. But snow is lovely. You'd love it. The, the perfect thing is rain. Rain is just brilliant. I hated rain because it was always a problem with, you know, my shoes, I liked them, and they got wet. And then all of a sudden, you... You love it. There is no problem. They're not getting dirty. You can jump in every puddle. It's a great, fun experience. It's warm. Rain is usually warm. I mean, occasionally in no November, when it gets a little stormy, yeah, it's a little not so comfortable. But what I found out was, if you don't need any gloves, you don't need any shoes. Because the feet, once they move, are really warm. And also what happens to the body, when we don't put any attention to our feet, then the whole system says there's nothing we have to take care down there, and the whole blood flow more or less stops above your knee. And so that's the reason women have cold feet. Who has cold feet of the ladies in the room? Let's, let's ask the other way. Who doesn't have cold feet of the ladies in the room? One, two, Three, four, five, one man, yes, <laughs> very good. <laughs> you, you get in touch with your female side, yes, I can tell. Um, and so this is what, what happens. I used to have cold feet. My s several husbands have complained about this rather uh, frequently back then. And um, I, know, I thought that this will never change. I thought life is not possible without socks. It is. <laughs> actually. <laughs> and uh, surprisingly enough, once the body knows that things are happening down there, uh, it's amazing how, how fast the body adjusts. And we heard a lot about health care and what the body can do. I noticed within two months I had no cold feet anymore. I noticed between six weeks that I could move my toes individually, which I couldn't before. And I noticed that my whole posture changed to something more straighter. Um, I noticed that in my meditations, which I do frequently, I felt a whole comfortable buzz. The one I felt on the feet was just going through the body. Now, can you be in first-class hotels? Barefoot? Yes, you can. Will they say anything? No, they won't. Can you go to restaurants? Yes, you can. You might want to take some shoes with you because some stone floors are really cold there and then you put something on. Can you hike? Yes, you can. Um, I make differences where I do not go barefoot. There's these places where, for example, um, in weddings or in funerals where I would take too much attention up. And that's actually the only problem that this has, is that you get attention. 
not much actually, most people, and it's different in, in cities, you know. In some, let's say in Vienna, for example, people are staring at you straight, and then you wave, which I usually do when they stare, and then they don't even notice that you're a human being. <laughs> in Munich, they ignore you. I mean, somebody says something. Um, in, in Denmark, they also ignore you. In California, interesting enough, they tell you, about a beautiful blouse you wear on the traffic light, but they completely ignore you when you're barefoot. So uh, in Rome, I put shoes on because I couldn't get my feet clean anymore, and that's where I draw the line. <laughs> I wash my feet three, four times a day, and if they're not clean anymore, that's it. The most fear people have is that they hurt themselves. Now, here is my question in the room. Have you ever hurt your hands? A cut, a bruise, a hammer? Yes. Yeah, okay. Why are you not wearing any gloves? Yeah, but you hurt them. And you do, we do lots of things with our hands that are much more dangerous than what I do with my feet. I stepped on two pieces of glass in this year. Uh, one was in my kitchen, <laughs> one was on the street, and you take them out. It's not a really big deal. But the, the fear that we have that something would happen is much greater than it actually happens. And if you want to just try it out once in a while or tomorrow at 12 o'clock when we have when you have down outside and try this out, I would love to see you. It is possible, it is fun, and middle-aged women often complain that, I, that they're not seen anymore. My suggestion is take your shoes off. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah.